So <laughs> welcome everybody. Um, today we are talking about um, consumer health, otherwise known as patient information. Uh, my name is Christine Nielsen. And I'm Orby Dingwall. And we are your MyNet librarians. Um, so, uh, oops. <laughs> Just as a as a quick refresher, um, if you've if you've been to our webinars before, you'll know the drill with with the the software that we use. Um, otherwise, if you need to find your webinars, uh, your webinar, your menu for go to webinar, uh, sometimes it disappears. Uh, but there is a little kind of a flower icon. It, it more reminds me of like Jacks when you were a kid. You played ball in Jacks, perhaps, um, and that that little icon if you click on that that should bring your menu back up okay um which looks like this if you ever want to get rid of it um there's this little arrow here on the side um so that would collapse it or expand it um you can see if you're muted um you also have the option of entering questions so uh this this little box here says enter a question for staff you just type it in click on send and it will come to us and then we can address your questions okay so <laughs> now it's time for the test uh, <laughs> were you able to locate the question box is our question and I'm just going to launch a poll here So far, so good. We're still waiting for, for some people to answer. Okay, well, I think everybody who intends to answer has. So, um, those folks have answered yes, so this is excellent news. Uh, we will continue on with the presentation. Okay, uh, now in terms of what we're going to cover today, uh, there are some some things that we, we usually cover at the beginning regarding MyNet services. Um, after that, we're going to talk about some critical appraisal tools um, that you can use yourself and talk about with your patients. And then we're also going to talk about uh, some places to go for reliable patient information. Okay, so after today's session, we're going to uh, post the recording for this uh, this webinar. It's on our website, www.mynet.ca. Uh, we'll also send around the slides and uh, ask you for a little bit of feedback. Okay, so question number two. What is it that you want to get out of this session? And we will just give a, a couple couple seconds, a minute, to see see what you guys had in mind. Okay, we'll just wait a few more seconds to, to give everybody a chance to indicate what they want to learn today. Okay, well, I'm going to close the poll and based on the the very scientific nature of our poll we can tell everyone wants to learn everything <laughs> so that's we love it we love it when that happens that's great all right so then let's get started i guess um for anybody who is new to mynet uh, mynet stands for manitoba's health information and knowledge network um, and it's a service that's run out of the university of manitoba uh, for staff that work at manitoba health seniors and active living um, staff of uh, participating regional health authorities and fee-for-service physicians here in the province of Manitoba. And there are a, 
there are a whole bunch of us that work on uh, the MyNet team. So there's Orvi and myself. Um, we've also got Gail um, and Cheryl. And Cheryl, I don't know if, if I've, and any of you ever uh, request articles. Um, she is the one who works all the magic to get those articles to you. So we would, we would be lost without Cheryl. Okay, uh, MyNet library cards are free, which is amazing. Um, all, all the services for MyNet are available at no cost to you. The cost is covered by the province. And um, you can get a library card by going to our website, filling out the form, um, sending it back with a copy of your ID just to indicate that, yep, you are an employee of such and such health region, you're a physician, etc. cetera. Um, and then we'll set you up. And we recommend that you do this, um, you know, when it's convenient, but also not, not waiting too long, because if you're ever in a hurry and you're like, oh, I need all this stuff, um, we would have to be like, okay, first get a card and, <laughs> and then, you know, and then we'll get it for you. So just for the sake of convenience, uh, we recommend that you have one. There's no cost, so it's not a big deal. All right. Um, in, in terms of a heads up, we have a relatively new web address. Um, a, a few months back, we uh, switched over. So now, um, if you have bookmarks, we suggest that you update them to www.minet.ca. Um, and it's, trust me, it's way easier to remember than the last URL. Mm -hmm. um, so if you, you just want to type it in, you can. In terms of service, I mentioned we, we offer various services. Um, so if you find yourself in a situation where you need to have information about something, um, you want us to do a literature search for you, we can. There is a form on our website. Uh, alternatively, you can just send an email and say, hey, um, I need to know about this topic, and then we can kind of follow up with you and get you know more details to the nitty gritty in terms of what you're looking for. We also do document delivery, which um, is what I referred to earlier when I was talking about articles. Um, so if you need a particular journal article, um, we can track that down and, and send that to you electronically. At the moment, um, the physical library at the university is closed, so we can't send physical things. Um, but in, in more normal times, um, if you wanted to request a book from the university library, uh, we would facilitate that as well. Okay, uh, we have current awareness alerts, and these are um, just a mechanism to kind of keep up on on the research that's uh, that's coming out on a particular topic or from a particular particular journal. Um, we would set it up, and you would get periodic emails when new things relating to your topic or journal uh, were published. So that can be handy. Um, training and orientation sessions, of course, like the one we're doing today. Are, are on our list and we also have access to UpToDate for you guys. So uh, UpToDate is the only item that you can access directly uh, without us being kind of in the middle. Um, and this is this is a provincial license um, and you, you do need your library card to sign in to uh, to access UpToDate. Okay, so if you have kind of burning questions, you can contact us. You can also check out our email, at, uh, sorry, our, web address, our website. <laughs> having a day here. Uh, our website for, for more details about that stuff. Okay, so I am going to switch things over to Orvi um, and she's going to talk for a little bit about um, critical appraisal. Okay, you ready Orvi? Yeah, Excellent. I sure am. Uh, yeah, thanks Christine. So we're here today to talk about providing quality information to patients and consumers. And partly that's just because that is something good uh, that we want to be able to do. But partly it's because of, uh, we thought it was a good time to focus on it because of the age that we're in. So Christine's gonna take us to the next slide. And sure, we've yeah. got on this next, <laughs> on this next slide, um, it's, so there's some really great uh, research and evidence into how consumers and patients are looking for information that they find on the internet. And so what this study has found, um, and reminder again, we will be sending out our slides, so you don't have to worry about jotting this down, we'll send you the link to it, is that when most patients are looking for health information, they're searching about symptoms 
And this was something that um, I found very fascinating. Uh, and they're also very prone to bias. So that could mean, you know, they type in some symptoms and then they get a result right away that um, there's definitely some bias in that form of searching. And uh, this team of researchers found that we need to have better ways to guide patients to become better searchers so that they can find better information to lead them to more accurate decision making. Uh, and on the next slide, it's another study looking at how people are using and searching for information. And this one is about, uh, and I think this comes as no surprise, but that fake news really is putting public health at risk. And it's really up to all of us professionals um, to be involved in helping um, people be able to spot fake news, to uh, look for more authoritative sources. Um, so we've got, some, we've got some work to do, and that's why we're here today. Now the next slide, so we're talking first, like Christine said, about critical appraisal. Uh, and this is usually one of my favorite days of the year is April Fool's Day uh, because the um, opportunities for critical appraisal are so great. This year, because of COVID, this wasn't really a thing. Um, nobody was having that sort of uh, opportunity for, for humor. But often it'll be, uh, you know, businesses or um, all kinds of places. They put out sort of their April Fool's thing and people are really great at remembering to critically appraise information on that day. And we hope that uh, every everyone, we can assist you and uh, help you assist your patients and your consumers to be better at critical appraisal. So these are two, yeah, it's okay to go ahead, Christine. These are two of our favorite resources that we can use to help in critical appraisal. There are thousands of these types. These are just two of our favorites. If you've got another favorite one, well, one, we'd love to hear about it. Um, but they're, and they're all very similar with slight nuances and differences. So I personally love the CRAP test because it's really quick and easy to remember just that C-A-R-P. I also, so you're looking, when you're looking for information, is it current? Is it reliable? Who is the author? And are they actually an authority? And what is the purpose of that information? Are they trying to sell you something? Are they trying to, you know, spin you a conspiracy theory, um, get you to join a cult? Are they trying to influence your political decision? What are they trying to do? Or are they just an expert trying to actually give you reliable health information? Um, so I like it. It's just like a really quick checklist you can always have running in the back of your head as a starting point. Um, and then another favorite is this nice infographic. I think this is really great to have just up, uh, you know, beside your desk and um, some great tips to, to take you through. So these are tools that you yourself can use. And they're also tools that you can give to your patients um, and to uh, the public to use on an ongoing basis. On the next slide, we've got a new tool. This is new um, this spring from the Canadian Agency for Drugs and Technology and Health, PADA. They have such amazing information. And as you can see, it's called, Can You Trust Dr. Google? Um, and I will also, again, mention, um, we've prepared a handout with all of these resources on it. So again, you're welcome to take notes, but we'll also send you uh, send you a summary of this. You can um, have it and share it with others. Uh, and like I said, there's so many of these. This is much longer and more comprehensive than like the four point crap test, uh, but it covers the same kind of information. Um, and Christine will go to the next slide and it just zooms in a little bit to sh so we can, um, you know, how do we tell if it's legitimate? Who is the author? When is the date? What is their objective, purpose, transparency, and usability? Um, so these are all just really good tips. Find one that you, you, you like, that resonates with you, and uh, jump off from it. So these aren't, um, you know, these aren't meant to be the be all and end all, but they are meant to be a starting point to say, 
is this total junk that I just need to toss out and don't worry about? Or is this from an authoritative source that I can use? Is it a reputable source? Um, and then you really start getting into uh, the more scientific critical appraisal. Were their methods good? Did they have the appropriate sample size? Did they control for bias in the appropriate ways? All of those kinds of things. But just as a filtering point, these tools are awesome. Now, um, I'm not sure, maybe you can all just enter into the chat. Um, did anyone have a chance to watch uh, some of these online verification skills um, videos with Mike Caulfield? So we sent them in the reminder yesterday. Uh, so you can just enter in your chat and let us know if you watch these or not. These were actually created for students, um, but I, like even I found them really helpful. They're really quick and short, to the point, really helpful. I see no one has chatted us yet. Um, that's okay, just yes or no. Um, and they just give you some really great points about how to verify the information that you're looking at online. So on the next slide, I just sort of summarized some of their key points, which is when you're, uh, now this was something that I actually have, uh, once I saw this, it, it was like a little light bulb went on and I've been using it a lot ever since, which is investigate the source that you're looking at um, and also to rely on established media. So this was, his points are about things in the media. So in health, it's a little bit different, um, but you could still rely on established and trusted sources like authoritative journals, like the New England Journal of Medicine, for example. Um, but one of the things that they did was they looked at two American pediatric societies. One was an association and one was a society or something. They had very similar names. Their websites looked very similar. And, um, and he, they went through how you can actually see who is the real one and who is the one that is trying to push their, um, uh, agenda. Push their yeah, push their agenda. And and what they said was, is like, when you're trying to figure out how legit it is or not, don't spend lots of time looking through that page, trying to see what's going on there. Leave that page, go to somewhere else like Wikipedia and say, what is this society or association actually called? So you can more quickly and readily identify who is the true source and who is the um, imposter, basically. So that was a great tip. The other one is find the original source. So if you've ever been, you know, maybe you've been watching the news on CBC and they're talking about the new COVID article that came out in the New England Journal of Medicine. Well, don't just rely on what the CBC tells you or a newspaper or your friend on Facebook or whatever. Go to then that original source. Uh, now, sometimes this is easier said than done because sometimes in the media, they're reporting on things that actually aren't um, in the public domain yet. Uh, and we're happy to help with this. So if you've heard about something, it's like, oh, my friend told me about this new article, but I'm having trouble tracking it down or I don't have time to track it down. I'd rather spend my time just reading the article. We can help with that, absolutely. And then there's also fact checking sites. And we're gonna talk about these a little bit later. Um, but these are actually helping you in the, is this actually true or not? So they're really great. They do a lot of um, the work for you. Okay, so those are some great tips. Um, there's also this really neat site. It's called newsliteracy.ca. And again, it's helping to helping in the debunking process. It's got some really great tools to um, help you help develop your skills and um yeah it's, they've got some great you know false and misleading information thrives online 70 percent of falsehoods um or falsehoods are 70 cent more likely to be retweeted than the truth like this is alarming so these are all trends that just start with us so we can make sure first that the information that we're posting or sharing giving to our patients um uh, or the, the information that our patients are coming to us with, that then we can help them uh, debunk that. So some great tools here. Okay, on the next page, we've got this site. And I'm not sure, Christine, did you wanna go to the page or do you wanna just? I think okay. so, I think that will be Yeah, easy we're gonna to go to it. So we want to get a sense 
Um, so we've got here how how to make turmeric turmeric lemonade to completely relieve stress and anxiety. So if we use um, so we can look who is the author who's putting this out what site is this on it's on a site called powerofpositivity.com that doesn't sound to me like a very trusted source then we come down and we can just kind of start to skim it and see how they're reporting on information what kind of language are they using are they citing any sources or is it just their opinion and uh so they're quoting someone from Healthline, they're referencing someone with a PhD, there's a little journal article mentioned here. Um, they go on to say, oh, some of the really great, oh, I yeah, think they that have was, all kinds. That was above. Above, yeah. They've got some great claims about boosting your immunity and anti-aging substance and neuroprotective agent. Uh, natural treatment for arthritis. These to me are all signs of, you know, thumbs down. <laughs> An effective supplementary therapy for cancer, like alarm bell, alarm bell, alarm bell. So yes, it, this, it apparently does everything. Yeah, does everything totally easy. Don't need modern medicine. You can just make this lemonade and you will be so healthy and cured and all your cures will go away. Um, so I just, you know, just out of um, a few things, I'd probably scroll to the end uh, and just see again if they had actually quoted some sources. But, um, you know, for me, it was that power of positivity title that gave it away for me. What about you, Christine? Um, yeah, the, the power of positivity is suspicious. Um, there is a definite lean there. Um, I don't know. If any of you guys, when you were in school, you took those exam prep, you know, seminars, um, I did. And I do remember that one of the um, kind of tips for if you are doing a multiple choice exam is if uh, the op one, of the, one of the options says always or never, probably not the right one, right? So this is like way too definitive. It will completely relieve your stress and anxiety. It's like it's it, it it's completely done it's it's too extreme so that's 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 the thing that uh also stands out for me yeah and so we will talk in a little bit about some better places to learn to have authority information um on turmeric so we'll go to the next one and this is a bit of or we'll come back to our slides uh, so these are some fact-checking sites. So you might have heard something like, okay, I've heard that there's this great breakthrough, um, you know, all this new evidence out on, on the value of turmeric. So uh, we can use some of these fact-checking sites. Some are specific to health and some are specific to research, and we'll just kind of quickly go through them. Uh, so there's one called Health Feedback. And maybe, Christine, if you just go to the next slide. Um, and it shows an example of a page. So the claim here is that the World Health Organization stated that asympt asymptomatic spread of COVID-19 is very rare. Therefore, physical distancing and face masks are not necessary. And their verdict here is this claim is incorrect. And they go through and describe it. And so they use, um, they have claim reviews so that, that are inaccurate, unsupported, partially correct, correct. Uh, so th these sites are so valuable because they really lay it out for you. And often in these claims, there are like slivers of truth or there are truths that have been spun, but not in very effective ways. Um, and so these are really great. So sometimes for you, if you're just like, oh gosh, I don't, you know, I feel tired and I need help just trying to understand what is going on here. These are great sites. And also, if you've got patients that are almost neurotic in what they're reading about, uh, you know, reading on the internet, um, these are great resources to turn them to as well. Next is Snopes. And Snopes is not, um, not health related, and they have a similar kind of rating system. It's more comprehensive, but there's like true and mostly true. 
uh, all the way through misattributed or scam or labeled satire, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, and it's a similar kind of design, but like I say, it's not just for health. Um, and so this one is a Facebook book post is correct in saying N95 masks, surgical masks and cloth masks can be dangerous and or ineffective in presenting against COVID-19, et cetera, et cetera. And so this is mostly false and they go through um, all of the details. So again, especially in our current age of information coming out so fast and from a lot of authoritative sources fighting with um, uh, in in, uh, unauthoritative, very uh, opinionated people, these sites are really helpful in doing a lot of the work for you. And especially too, if you have patients that are coming to you with this kind of false information, you can then easily and quickly go to these sites and um, give them those tools to, so that they don't have to necessarily even do that critical appraisal themselves. Um, and I find too, reading through the, um, these explanations about like what's true, what's false, it really gets into a lot of that detail of, um, you know, well, this, this is sort of where it came from and how it kind of got out of control. It's really, I think there's lots of learning that you can read or that you can acquire just by reading through them. Okay, next is one called FaxCan and it's Canadian uh, and it's not health specific. So a little bit like, um, like Snopes. Uh, and again, a similar kind of rating system. Um, and I know we've just like slammed now three very similar uh, sites at you and you're thinking like, oh gosh, I'm already overwhelmed by all kinds of these things and I don't have a lot of time. Just start with one. Uh, start with one and take a look through it and get a sense. And then the next time you're at something that really has you scratching your head, go to that one, see if they talk about it. And if they don't, then you can go to the next one. So we'll take a look at what facts can looks like. So they've got uh, Parliament, um, you know, the Parliament uh, building, and uh, and so here is an example of um, one in four Canadians skips necessary medicine because of the cost, and this is actually false, and it mis it misrepresents the data. Um, so these are like fascinating things because sometimes, uh, so this was said by an MP um, in Vancouver. Sometimes things are said and then they spread like wildfire and we take them for truth when in fact they're not. So some really, really great um, information here. And even though it's not specific to health, there is health information that is included on it. All right, I think we have one more to go through. One or two, one, the, yeah, next one is Retraction Watch. And so this is really great. Um, this is specific to um, uh, the scientific and peer-reviewed journals, and um, and it's a searchable database of the retractions. Um, now, depending on what kind of work you're doing, this may or may not be something that you want to look through, but the first part of their site, uh, we've got some screen captures. It's basically a blog, and they um, uh, they write about sort of current issues and current things going on in science that are retracting or that are do need retractions um, or do need corrections. And um, yeah, and it's really neat and really informative and uh, is critical of the scientific literature. And then the next part is the retraction database. So they're um, related, like they have the blog part and then they've got the database part. And then this is where you can search for actual retractions. So we've got a screen capture here, and I know it just is like an overwhelming, um, you know, blurb of all kinds of information. But if there was a source, and maybe you had some questions about it, or if there was an author and you had a funny feeling about them, or if you, you know, might have heard something in the news about something, you can search here by all kinds of fields. So author, title, uh, subject, journal, year, all kinds of things. Um, so you might have maybe heard, uh, you know, again, our example, I'm not sure what Christine used here as our search example, but let's say you'd been hearing stuff about turmeric and maybe things had been published a year ago about it and then there was some controversy and you want to see if actually any of the scientific journals have um, sort of uh, 
uh, pulled back what they had um, included on it, then this is a really great site to do that. And we'll give you, and it'll explain um, where the retractions are. So those are some tips on critical appraisal and some sites that uh, really help do the critical appraisal for you or for your patients. Um, and Christine's going to talk about now where you can just go um, straight up for uh, great patient information. Yeah, thanks, Orvi. Um, so ideally, you, you wouldn't have to go through all that extra work, um, ideally. Um, so it's really good to have in your back pocket some sources of information that you can feel confident about, that you can send people to, that you can give people. Um, and we're going to go through a few of them. Um, the first are, are, they're just out there on the internet. They are freely available. Uh, the last one on the list we've got here is up to date. And like I said, we have a subscription to up to date for uh, healthcare folk in the province, uh, but is not available to the public. So if you wanted to give people information from there, um, you still can. Uh, you could print it out and, and, you know, give it to them, that kind of thing. So we'll start with Medline Plus, and Medline Plus is, um, it's actually a pretty well-established site. It's been around for years and years and years, and it is maintained by the National Library of Medicine in the States, and it is focused on um, information that is geared towards patients. So it's it's not not so complex language, um, you know, like the, the technical medical speak you know it's it's geared towards just everyday folk off the street and they cover a variety of topics um they have stuff about procedures um they actually have some uh if, if you're into it uh you, you can you can handle it um you, they have some videos of surgical procedures so people can see what they're in for um they have information about um, like drugs and supplements, um, and 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 again, this is this is kind of general information that's aimed at the public. Okay. Uh, and I'll just add, I don't know about you, Christine, but this is my single most favorite consumer health site because it's so accessible, it's so authoritative. They have everything, um, mm -hmm. and it's not great at like really diving into all kinds of specific details. But if you're just looking for like, what is this and what can I expect? Um, yeah, top notch starting point. Mm -hmm. And um, do you want to talk about like where they pull the information from? That is a good question. Where do they pull the information from? Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this is one of the things that um, also I like so much about it is because it's not like it's, it's uh, one group who just writes this information that they pull from all of the um, top uh, agencies and organizations in um, America and beyond um, and pull them all together. So if the, you know, if the um, pediatrics, the uh, pediatrician society has really great handouts or the breast cancer society has really great handouts, they're in Medline Plus. So, so you only have to search one place. You don't have to search a million places. Yes, thank you for the reminder, Orvi. I was having a moment. Okay, so back to our turmeric example. Um, they've got they've got information about turmeric. How convenient! And so um, maybe I'll make this slightly bigger um, if I can. Maybe I can't. Okay, um, that's all right. So I'll just kind of explain here. So we've got kind of some basic information. So we've got the, the, the common names, because of course, you know, sometimes you've got different names for the same thing. Um, so that if you're, if you're looking at, you know, a, a supplement and it uses one name versus another, you can kind of sort that out. Um, it gives some background about what it is. It tells you a bit about, you know, what we know about it. And in some cases, like if you're talking about the herbal stuff, you know, it, it, it's, it's a little, it's a little tentative. Like they might have statements like it is believed to do such and such a thing or help with this condition. Um, but if the research evidence isn't there, they're not going to say it will completely relieve all your stress and your anxiety. They'll say, well, maybe it might help a little, um, but we can't say for certain, right? So they're, they're upfront about um, whether or not there is evidence behind these things. 
Right, um, and you can see on the side they've actually got some related topics. So they have uh, an app, which is kind of cool. You can have an app, so you know if you're finding yourself looking at this kind of information a lot, you can download that. Um, they've also got an herbs at a glance, and then they've also got stuff that's really kind of focused towards healthcare providers as well. And so I don't know if you can read this. It says musculoskeletal inflammation and natural products. Um, so in that particular document, there would be information on turmeric, right? Um, so, so that's pretty awesome. Oops. Why is it not advancing? Well, this is exciting. Okay, let's let's see what happens if I. Oh, this isn't good. Um, can you still hear me, Orvi? I can still hear you. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to close the presentation and reopen because something has gone wrong. Um, sorry about that, folks. It'll just be a second. And these are the things that sometimes happen. And usually I see now, I now I, sh I should have saved my comments about Medline Plus for now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is, it is very well regarded. Um, if you talk to any health librarian, they will be um, very positive in what they have to say about Medline Plus. Okay, let me just skip And I know down too, to um, a few years ago, sort of, uh, I know a lot of physicians and they were like, Ugh, I don't need to know about this Medline Plus thing because I use all the handouts from the Mayo Clinic. And um, But Medline Plus does include all of those handouts from the Mayo Clinic. So chances are, if you've got one favorite site that has amazing handouts for patients, chances are they're also included in Medline Plus. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, so that's a good source. Another is choosing wisely. I'm sure you guys have heard about uh, choosing wisely before and just basically their their agenda is they want to make sure that um, all of the health care that, that is uh, delivered and people receive um, is is needed, is necessary, um, because there, there's been research documenting that there are so many unnecessary tests, um, either that they're, they're just out of date or they're not they're not really going to help um, but they get ordered anyway and there are a lot of reasons that that is um, but they've got they've got um, on their site I've got here the choosing wisely Canada uh, site a screen capture from them and they have patient pamphlets so like if someone comes to you uh, and an example here is the bone density tests uh, when you need them and when you don't um, some people, well, like people will have heard of that, right? And they'll be like, I, I, I think I need this because, you know, I've heard, you know, such and such a thing. Um, you can say, okay, here you go. Here's, here is authoritative information, uh, and it is made specifically for you, right? So for people in the general public. So there's, there's a whole bunch of different pamphlets, and these are again, uh, these are not so much focused on. Um, conditions or things like, uh, like herbs and supplements. These are about um, medical procedures and tests, right? Um, and, and that includes things like using antibiotics for urinary tract infection in the elderly, right? So when do you need it? When do you not? Um, yeah. And so the whole idea is to make healthcare more efficient um, and also, you know, prevent any uh, kind of adverse effects that can happen when, when uh, people have these tests that aren't needed because that can that can be the case that can happen okay um, there's also the medical library association in the u.s and they have a like a consumer health section uh, i believe is what they call it um, and th these are people um, librarians information professionals like that is their focus right is um, consumer health information and where to get reliable consumer health information and, and educating um, patients and things like that. So they have some some websites um, and again it's things like you know cancer.gov, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, um, 
you know, general kind of sites, but also specific things relating to, you know, diabetes or heart disease, um, that kind of stuff. And now you'll notice on the side, they've also got um, some some other resources as well. So they've got a, a bit um, relating specifically to COVID-19, which is, of course, a, a very relevant topic these days. Um, they have information on finding good health information. Uh, the what did my doctor say? So one thing that I really like um, that the MLA has done is that they've kind of put together almost like a little dictionary for for medical terminology. So like if if your doctor is talking about post postprandial um, administration of a medication, I mean that's not how people talk, <laughs> right? They they don't, they probably don't know what postprandial means, so they can kind of look if they're if they're maybe too embarrassed to ask or you know they didn't read the little sheet that comes with the, the medication until they got home um you know they can look that up see what that means oh that means after eating right um so they can kind of be a little bit more informed uh when it comes to the language that health professionals use like with just as a matter of course right and i think uh, christine just to add to that is um when the librarians are uh, creating these lists of their great sites. It's not just who has good, you know, evidence-based information. It's also who has good evidence in information and writes about it in an accessible way for patients, because mm -hmm. that language of accessibility, like Christine just said, um, is it in a common language and, and at, at an accessible reading level um, for patients. So that's how information makes it onto these lists. Mm -hmm. Good point. Okay, so last but not least, we've got up to date. Um, and you may have, have seen, we have a webinar that we do about up to date. Um, and up to date is good for a lot of things. Um, it is not the be all and end all, but they do have um, patient information, stuff that's specifically um, geared towards patients. Right, so um, this is just uh, a view of the, their website. So if you were to do a search, um, you get some options here. You can see everything. You can see stuff related to adults, the pediatric population, uh, patient, and, and patient is the one that we are interested in. Um, so if you were to go there, it says, okay, patient education, foot care for people with diabetes, um, beyond the basics, right? So this is, this is a little more uh, in depth than just kind of like, hey, intro to, foot care. Um, so, so that's kind of nice that they have the, the basic, but then a little bit more, um, I'll say advanced. I don't know if it's really advanced, but, um, but you, you, you take my meaning. Um, so that's like the next step, right? Right. And so if you go to these things, like they, the way that it's laid out, you know, it's, it's, it's not spectacular for printing, but if you were to, to go to the print view, um, then you can print it off. Um, you can see, you know, all the same information um, over on the side. I'm not sure how well it's showing up for you guys, um, but they, it kind of breaks things down. So in this particular um, patient information handout, um, they talk about risk factors, um, they talk about foot exams, prevention, uh, all, all the things that you would want your patients to know about. Okay. Um, now, last but not least, uh, we've we've kind of pulled together some some sources of information as well. Um, I don't I don't think we rival Medline Plus or anything like that, <laughs> but uh, but you know we've we've given it a shot. Um, and so if you go to our our website, we have toolkits, and there are different topics, and one of them is consumer health. So um, on this page, we we do have uh, links to some of the uh, uh, evaluating um, critical appraisal type information uh, that we talked about here as well. So things like links to, to, to Snopes, to uh, how to spot fake news infographic, um, that, that the video series about online verification skills, that kind of thing. Um, but we also have some subject specific sites. And again, these are things like the American Diabetes Association, Diabetes Canada, um, the, you know, the Canadian Virtual Hospice is an outstanding resource. Um, things like that um, and I mean hopefully you would find something useful there um, 
just as, as an aside, if you know of something that is a really good source of information that we don't link to, um, we also take suggestions. So if you want to, if you want to shoot that uh, in an email, um, please do let us know. Um, yeah, and yeah. our site here too does have more of a Canadian focus as well. Like sometimes mm -hmm. the American stuff is far superior, um, <laughs> but sometimes it's different or sometimes it's just not as relevant. Um, we've got really great Canadian sources and sometimes they are featured like in Medline Plus or on um, the Medical Library Association's list, uh, but not always. And so that's also um, a reason why we'd love to, for you to pop in here. Mm -hmm, for sure. Okay, so uh, it, it, it's been a lot of information <laughs> in the last 45 minutes. Um, we've kind of reviewed the different critical appraisal tools. Um, some of them might have been new to you, some might not. Um, but we encourage you to, to check them out when you have a chance. Um, and we, we do have all the, the links to those as well. Uh, through the fact checking websites, those are those are interesting. And like Orvi said, like some of them, like they, they don't all cover exactly the same thing. Like something that's super big uh, in the news, like, hey, you know, face masks don't really work for preventing COVID-19. Like they, th if that's all over the place, then they might all have something about that. But they they will have um, different things that they that they focus on, right? Okay. Um, we also talked about different sources that you can go to directly, um, and I mean there there are all kinds of sources out there, but this is this is a start. Um, so hopefully you will find that they're useful as well. Okay. Um, and yeah, Christine, if you just want to go back to that site too, I think that what some of the evidence or what a lot of the evidence suggests is that uh, a lot of patients they just pop things in Google instead mm. of going to authoritative sources and then looking around those sites. So even if you were just looking for like one tiny nugget of a takeaway, it might be encouraging your patients to go to um, one of, you know, one of these sites or, or a specific site meeting their um, conditions or their circumstances and having them search on that site instead of relying on, on Google. Yeah, because like anybody can put anything on the internet. Um, there is there is no kind of everybody's a doctor body. on the internet, right? That's right. You know, it's like, are you going to go to Medline Plus or Christine's, uh, you know, herbal outlet? Power and positivity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, while while Google is useful, um, sometimes being a little more strategic is is the better way to go. Okay, so we have time for, oh, is it doing this again? Oh, here we go. Okay, uh, we have time for questions. Um, we've got our contact information posted up here. So if you don't have questions at the moment, you can always uh, contact us later. Um, and that, that's, that's good too. But if you want to uh, talk about something now, then we have time for that. This is something interesting. I can't, I've lost the questions. Oh, there we go. So yeah, so we'll just, we'll just hang out for a bit and um, there are no questions at the moment, but if you, if you want to ask, please, uh, please feel free. And again, we will be sending out the link to the recording and our handout and the slides. Uh, and if you like today's session, um, then for sure, uh, pass around well even if you didn't like it but you like the handouts or what have you um you know you're free to circulate them um to anybody that you think uh might be interested mm -hmm. or if you're interested in other sessions like we've got a whole we did a whole other session about critically appraising uh research information so i mean you know the crap test or those um those uh just like quick um quick tests are only the start of the surface. So we've got lots of other resources to help you really dig into um, critical appraisal and uh, looking at what you're reading or, or using and whether you can use it to support your practice or what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Quiet group today. 
It is. It, it's Wednesday, I guess. Is that <laughs> everyone's kind of middle of the week frame of mind? All right, well, we'll end there. We are always available to answer any questions that you have afterwards. And we thank you so much for coming today. Thanks for coming. Bye.